Hi, I'm Larry Nespoli with the New Jersey Council of County Colleges. At New Jersey's community colleges, we believe that our students, as well as all citizens, need to be informed about the important issues facing higher education. That's why we're proud to support programming produced by the Caucus Educational Corporation and their partners in public television. Excellence in Education, next on Caucus New Jersey. Funding for this edition of Caucus New Jersey has been provided by the New Jersey Education Association, Wells Fargo, University Hospital, Newark, New Jersey, New Jersey Sharing Network, dedicated to saving lives through organ and tissue donation, Passaic County Community College, New Jersey Council of County Colleges, and by New Jersey Resources. Promotional support provided by NJ Biz, All Business, All New Jersey, and by New Jersey Family Magazine and NJFamily.com. Welcome to Caucus. I'm Steve Adubato. Today we celebrate educational excellence with four terrific New Jersey teachers here in the studio to talk about what it really takes to be a great teacher. We're joined by Arjean Safari, who is 2017 New Jersey State Teacher of the Year, a music teacher at Pascack Valley High School in Hillsdale, New Jersey. Frank Epifanio, Teacher of Social Reasoning at Camden's Big Picture Learning Academy. Gary Melton is teacher of responsible thinking. We're going to find out more about what that really is mm -hmm. at Pennsylvania Avenue School in Atlantic City. And Lindsay Frevert is a second grade teacher in an elementary, elementary school in Somerville. And that elementary school is? Vanderveer Elementary School. That was my, my way of ducking how to say that. Um, <laughs> um, by the way, we met our Jean in Atlantic City at the NJEA convention. And it was an honor to meet you. And it's great. It's an honor to meet all of you. And for those of us who have our some of our kids in public schools, we thank you for everything that you do every day for our children. But in getting ready for the show, one of the things that kept hitting me, as well as our terrific producers, is that you're all so incredibly innovative in what you do every day. And it strikes me that being a great teacher today is different than it was just five or 10 years ago. More creative, more imaginative, harder working than ever, true? Um, yeah, I absolutely agree. Um, I think one of the things that we try to teach our students is to um, have critical thinking skills, to get creative, as you said, think outside of the box. I'm just really very um, honored to be teaching music, and that's the subject that really can open up their minds, and I think it just teaches them a lot about creativity, collaboration, and those skills that are, um, I think, very essential in today's world. Stay on that. You have an a cappella group that you teach? Yes. Talk about it. Well, it's my boys. I started them. Um, <laughs> it's, a, it's an all-male acapella group, and I started them uh, about um, nine years ago. Next year is our 10th anniversary. Congratulations. Thank yes. you. Um, and I started them because I wanted to involve boys in my performing groups. Uh, but it became a lot more than that. It's just the camaraderie. It's brotherhood. Anyone is welcome in this group. It's um, it's. Uh, 9 through 12, grades 9 through 12, and the boys meet after school. In fact, I have a concert today with them tonight, uh, and I'm excited. They are extremely um, passionate about music. They are extremely um, uh, passionate about making music together and performing, but uh, more interestingly, they are passionate about raising money for good cause. This Saturday, they're performing for Relay for Life in my school. and uh, They perform at nursing homes. They make a difference yeah. in other people's lives. These are, as my our producers have told me, these are some kids, some of these young men, not particularly into sports, may not have connected in other ways with other kinds of kids, other activities. But they found a home with you doing this. How did you know that these were those kids? Um, I think you, music has that force and power to change uh, people. <clears throat> and I think drawing them through music and also they find that no matter who you are, um, mm. no matter where you come from, no matter what your background, mm. your beliefs, yeah. you have that one passion that's you know, and passion is the key. And, yes. And Gary, what's so interesting, and we're gonna each one of you are gonna have a chance to tell your story to to talk about the special passion, the innovative approach to connecting with your students. But Gary, your school, your kids, yeah. you're looking to break, quote, the school to prison pipeline. Yes. In Atlantic City. Yes. What are you talking about? 
uh, when, when we discuss the School to Prisons Pipeline, we're talking about a system in which uh, how we punish our students is not educating them in terms of their uh, uh, schoolwork education, but is educating them to be punished and then to leave school mm. and ultimately leads to prison. And so the question that I began to ask myself when I got involved with the School to Prison Pipeline um, was, how can we fix it? I mean, we know it's a problem. I know my students, uh, a, a lot of them end up in prison. A lot of them end up in gangs. A lot of them end up in places where, when they were kindergartners, that wasn't their plan. So how do we break this cycle? And so one of the things that uh, I believed is, is that instead of just punishing, why don't we work on the behavior? Instead of just coming to an in-school suspension. For or, example. Uh, for example, um, and I'll use a great example, a student curses, okay? Uh, and the teacher writes them up for cursing. Many times, you know, our code of conduct reads first offense, second offense, third offense, you're out. Those are the rules. Those are the rules. All right. And you play ball, you, you know, oh, at yeah, the highest no, level. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Absolutely. By the way, let everyone know you play for the Washington Redskins. Yeah, yeah. There are rules. Wide yeah. receiver, those are the rules. That's it, right? <laughs> that's right. So what's those wrong with that? Devil's advocate. What's wrong yeah, with that? Yeah, those are the rules. That's rule. a policy. Um, rules are great. But every rule, there has to be a way where you can fix the problem. Okay? So we'll use football as a great example. <laughs> I have a problem that when I go across the middle, I don't tone it down, so the free safety comes up and smacks me, okay? You don't mean like Jack Tatum kind of? No, I mean like the first hit I got was from Ronnie Lott, okay? Okay, enough right. said, number 42. Set. So <laughs> I, learned, I learned the proper way to run a dig yes. route, all right? Uh, and so do I keep breaking that rule and getting punished by getting mm -hmm. hit, or, do I, or am I taught how not to go across? Is that the kind of reason? Is that is that responsible That's thinking? That's responsible thinking. Is responsible thinking is to avoid those situations, That's to right. avoid Ronnie Locke because you can get your head taken Absolutely. off. Absolutely. Absolutely. As opposed to those are the rules. That's, That's it. Because you can't learn. You don't learn anything that way. You don't learn anything that way. No matter how many times you might try. Well, I'm gonna punish you again. I'm gonna punish you again. Mm. It's not working. And so we'll sit down. I have 20 different packets that I utilize depending on what you did what infraction you uh, uh, yeah. did, and we sit down you and came talk up about with this? the behavior. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's your story? Where do I start? <laughs> Everyone here is phenomenal. Oh, what's it like being around other great teachers it, along with a great teacher like you? I have to say I'm very overwhelmed right now listening to their stories um, because I just feel that I do what I'm supposed to do, and it's just expected of me as a teacher. Not really, because Walking Wednesday was not what you were expected to do. Tell everyone what Walking Wednesday is. Let's get right to it, because it was not in your contract. I happen to know that. <laughs> <laughs> it was not. Um, our uh, school district doesn't have buses. So, Somerville, New Jersey. Correct. There is no busing. It's a two-mile by two-mile uh, town. Uh, so our principal, Susan Haynes, uh, 12 years ago came up with an idea of this walking school bus and I jumped right on it. So every Wednesday I meet with the students starting at a particular point and I walk to school with them. And what you'll see is knocking on people's doors to get the kids to come out to walk with us. So we start with like a little tiny bus and by the end we're filled with all the kids walking to school together. What's it like? I love it. It's my favorite day. I actually don't like if I have professional development or I have to take off on a Wednesday because then I'll miss that opportunity with those students. You learn so much about a child, sometimes not in a classroom. Like what? Um, if they're off, you've kind of they feel more willing to talk to you about it on a walking school bus because uh, you're not in school. Um, and then I can quickly tell the teacher that that student is off or... Turn around what goes on in their home, their lives? Yep. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> How does that help you as an educator? Well, let's say they're walking and they're like, oh, I'm so hungry, I didn't eat breakfast this morning. We can solve that problem. Um, if someone had maybe a fight with a parent, this is something they can talk about when they get to school. So really just making sure, simple things. We talk about sports. You're you into know, sports. I am. <laughs> but by the way, what's it like being around him? I'm really over, I just got over <laughs> she's, You know she's going to ask for an, Before you leave, you know she's going to ask for an autograph, except she is a giant fan. Oh, oh. oh. Right, See, it's right, <laughs> right away. He's got to have connections. Like, he's got to have connections no, no. in some way. No, no, listen. His whole, all of his body language changes when yeah. you find out you're a giant fan. Yeah. Go ahead, keep talking. We can make it work. <laughs> okay. Um, so you use sports examples correct. in your teaching. Well, and while we're while we're walking, we could you know talk about the weekend, what what happened during a game. There are such life lessons when you're walking. Right. Looking at the clouds, the students are like, Miss Forever, why are the birds flying in that way? Mm -hmm. um, you know, in the fall time, we see one thing on the tree. In the springtime, we we see another. So 
I feel as though we're teaching them. On walking the Wednesdays. Yeah. Or how to walk properly. We're, we cross in a crosswalk. We're not just going to cross the street. Um, I, yeah. It is, to me, the greatest, greatest. Talk story. about innovative. Now, Frank, let me ask you. There's a lot of things that go on, but you teach your students an awful lot about citizenship. Yes. And you don't just teach it out of a textbook. You do it in very creative and innovative ways. Do, what do you, you run a, what, a marathon? <laughs> Help us on this. <laughs> so, um, perfect example. One way um, I taught a student about citizenship was I helped him become a citizen. Um, he was a senior last year. We're a big picture school, so I didn't even have him as a. What does that mean, a big picture student school? in my in my class? So big picture, it's um, a network of schools throughout the country, and we do things a little bit differently. Instead of social studies, we have social reasoning. So we're connect. We are. We have the three R's: um, relationships, rigor, and relevance. So how do we make what happened in 1776 in Philadelphia relevant to today? How does it connect? Because everything connects. How do you do that? Well, what happened then? How can we connect to today? And we ask the kids, we do a lot of project-based stuff. So it's, what's going on today? I need you to find out what's going on today. What can you find out that's happening now that was happening then? Is there any similarities? Are there any differences? And another thing we do is on Wednesdays, we have learning through interests. We don't go to regular classes. They're in their um, advisory all day. Instead of homerooms, we have advisories. That anchors our day, first period, last period. Um, the students in our school look for um, internships throughout the city and surrounding the city. So the student I helped become a citizen, um, his first year he interned at another school. Then he interned for uh, WHYY in Philadelphia. Then he was WHYY, in our PBS affiliate yes. in Philadelphia? Yes. Um, then he interned for uh, Getty Images. He was on the presidential campaign show. Right. He was coming in, 18 year old kid, mm -hmm. coming in with pictures of Hillary Clinton, Bernie Sanders, Donald Trump, awesome stuff. Well, he was walking by my classroom and he says, Mr. Epifanio, do you know anything about becoming a citizen? I said, I know a little bit, not a lot, but I can help you out. <laughs> you know, why not? This kid needs help, I'm going to help him. I don't care if he's in my class or not. He's in, he's in my school. Wasn't he even in your class? No. no. <laughs> Just happened to know him. And you helped him do that? Yeah, it was a long process. I caught, he filled out his application. <laughs> I caught some things he made some errors on. Um, How rewarding was it for you? It was, you know, they say teachers don't get monetary bonuses. We get bonuses every day in our classroom. We see that light bulb go off and the kids, you know, right above the kid's head. It's, it's, it's absolutely wonderful. When you hear him talking, Arjun, what does it say to you? Um, I'm, just, first of all, I'm just admiring what you're doing. And it is just an honor being here, really. Uh, I'm just in adoration of what you do every day in class. Um, I, specifically resonate with the fact that you make connections mm -hmm. with the kids, not just with the kids, but make connections with what they learn and what's happening outside the world. Because I think this is the huge, huge part of becoming a, a citizen, a human being, um, a really well-developed person. Um, what I do, I love doing um, interdisciplinary projects, for example. Yes. I love working, um, making connections. Music can connect to anything. So yes. I love to <laughs> connect with word languages, with history, mm -hmm. with with um, anything to my last project I did was Romeo and Juliet. I did a project with the English department, word languages department, and then uh, we had a guest um, performer come and talk about, and then it was the differences between, uh, you know, the French interpretation of Gounod's opera and Shakespeare, and then we also uh, did the connection between West Side Story, the story of West Side oh, Story, and right. Romeo and Juliet, mm -hmm. and then the, cl right. uh, the culmination was them actually going into the Met and seeing the new production this January. Oh. Where'd you come up with these ideas? <laughs> well, you know, so um, there's 24 hours a day, and, uh, <laughs> and you think about it all the time. But uh, specifically, you this think project, about it all the time. Yes, yes. constantly. You think about it all the time. You don't sleep. You think about it all the time. Yeah, it's, you don't all the time. All there's the time. No sleep. How can I reach? Yeah. How can I connect? How, yes. can, I connect? How can I do it better? It's, it's, right. How can I? Okay. Yeah. Let me do this. Um, one thing we think about is. Um, a, how do we do great programs? B, how do we pay for it? I think about it 24-7. The yeah. other thing is, um, we have to take a quick break right here. Sure. I promise we come right back. And then we talk a little bit about your passion for teaching, but also continue to talk about how the profession of being an educator has uh, evolved. Mm -hmm. You're extraordinary, all of you. We'll be right back after this. To see more Caucus New Jersey with Steve Adubato programs, visit us online at steveadubato.org. If you would like to express an opinion, email us at info at caucusnj.org. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Ph.D. 
and follow us on Twitter at Steve Adubato. Welcome back, folks. We're talking to four of the greatest educators you will ever see. <laughs> Gary, it's true. It's true. All right, here we go. How many years have you been teaching? 21 years. How many years? It's my 12th. How many years? 11 in a public school. OK. Seven. Seven, all right. So as the uh, more experienced <laughs> of the group, the thing you love about teaching most is? Um, I think he said it. I think Frank said it. Seeing that light bulb go off. Uh, watching a student who didn't believe hmm. all, of, all of a sudden becomes a believer. Yeah. All of a sudden, this student who came in who maybe didn't speak the language, mm. another student came in with a bunch of issues that, you know, at home or, you know, uh, is in foster care or something of that nature, and uh, sitting down with that student one-on-one -on -one at times and saying, okay, we're going to change you a little bit so that you become a better student. Now, you are in Atlantic City. Yes. People think Atlantic City casinos, and we mm -hmm. wish nothing but the best for the casino business mm -hmm. and the jobs created. But the other side of Atlantic City is what you know best, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And so it's also incredibly disappointing, because you also see when it doesn't work out. Oh, absolutely. How hard is that for you? Uh, it was tough. Uh, when the casino started to close. Um, no, no, I don't mean the casinos. I mean when it doesn't work out for your students, oh, for who are, for, for many of them, what you are doing for them it presents the best opportunity for them to be successful in life. Well, yeah, it, it does give them opportunity to be successful in life because they see the blight, okay? And so they're starting from a whole different area than a, a student who's in an affluent uh, uh, society. They're, they're in a whole different area. And like, right. you, like you said, the casinos is one side of Atlantic City. Then there's a side that people don't see. And so when you have students who are coming in who don't see the glitz and glamour, yeah. but they see the rough side, mm -hmm. and then they sit down and say, okay, let's get to this rough side and let's figure out a way we can get out of the four walls of what I call Atlantic City. And give them hope. Give them hope that there's something outside those walls. And if I can just lead you to it, yeah. you'll see something that you want to shoot for. The thing that you, in, that you talked a little bit about, about the Walk Walking Wednesdays, but... The thing that gives you the greatest satisfaction is? Mine is the future. So when they come back and um, they share with you what um, I said to them 10 years ago that stuck with them. I'm gonna get emotional. Um, but when, when they come back. Do you get emotional? Yeah. Why? Um, I had, when I received the, this, the Milken Educator Award, the I had Michael a lot Milken of, Award? Mm -hmm. yeah, the former students that came back or wrote emails, I received an email from a student that was in my very first class. And when I think back to my first year, I made a lot of mistakes. Um, but he was able to tell me everything we did in the class and the rewards that I gave. And he said, um, but one thing you instilled in every single one of us is that you believed in us. And, um, we knew in your class that we had you as our support. And we always have you as our support. You know, I go to their high school graduation, their eighth grade, you know, I go to their baseball games if they're, if, you know, anything, dance recitals. Um, so it's when they come back. You know, I had another parent who reached out. Yeah. His son, her son was very into drama and theater. And, you know, for a male, unfortunately, it's, should I go into that? Should right. I not? And she wrote a letter saying that it was because of you that he is now pursuing theater, and you he changed, stuck with it. I'm sorry for interrupting. You can you change lives. I, 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 it's not so much changing, but making sure that children know that whatever they want to do, they can do. And, and, you, and I believe in it. And you know Somerville because you grew up in Somerville. I did. You're connected to that community. Oh, it's my life. <laughs> It's my, it's my everything. Those kids are my everything. Your greatest satisfaction and reward, Frank, is? When you um, see the students finding on their own, their own passions, their own interests, what they want to do when they um, you know, get out of high school. Because the, when they come in as freshmen, I usually teach the freshman classes, um, they think, they feel like they're going to be in that school forever. Four years is a long time for them. And we try to tell them, you're going to have to do something after this. Mm. Start thinking now what you want to do. And with that project-based learning that we do, a lot of them really do, um, through trial and error, they might have an internship one year, or they might think they want to do something. They get that experience on Wednesdays to go out. You know what, Mr. Epifanio? I really don't like this. I thought it like this is what I always wanted to do growing up. I don't like this. I need to change courses. Go ahead. It's, it's learn from your mistakes. Did you always know you wanted to be a teacher? Yes. 
Um, did you? I did. You did. I did. It's I, in my I, blood. <laughs> uh, my father was an educator. My sister's an educator. <laughs> when did you know you wanted to be an educator? Um, for me, it was a long journey. It was a journey of self-discovery. I was a musician always, right. so um, I... Uh, An accomplished no. musician. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I immigrated to the United States, and, um, you know, life started over. But um, so I thought I was going to be performing, and then here I thought that it was going to be something else. Forget about music. What are you going to do with music? But um, eventually I started to teach. Um, it was um, in the academy first, privately, and so I grew into understanding how much um, teaching changes lives. And I truly yeah. believe that it really transforms people and you can influence them. We have an incredible power. Teachers have an incredible power, power in the classroom and outside of classroom. And it can be positive or negative. And, and it's really important yeah. that we instill that positivity. I saw that power. Um, my father died when I was 24. He was only 56 years old. Um, but he was an educator all his life. Uh, at his viewing, we were there for about four hours of just mm -hmm. former students, people he's touched, and it's like, well, my dad did that as an educator. I'm definitely in the right, going did, in the right direction. What impact did it have on you as a kid? Um, well, the teacher was always right. Um, I was never allowed to come home and say, they're, they're being... Um, no, being when so, you saw those, oh, those, when those I saw kids that, with your, at your dad. Oh, it was just, you know, Sometimes in the classroom, we might not feel like we're making a difference, mm -hmm. like you were saying earlier. Um, you see people coming and telling stories of, you know, just these everyday things that my dad was doing that, as a teacher, you do. You know, like you said, it's not maybe not in your contract, but we go above, we go beyond. Um, and to, to my dad, it was he might not even have thought about it. It was just second nature to him. To that kid, it was, it was everything. Mm -hmm. It was okay. everything. Gary, let me ask you something. Mm -hmm. NFL, <laughs> were those other extraordinary athletes, the, the elite athletes, and, and for those of us who love sports and, and dabbled and, and struggled and realized we were never going to ever be good enough to do anything outside of high school, and you got there to the game, did you ever envision that you'd wind up in a classroom making the difference you're making today. Was that ever the plan? No, that wasn't the plan. Although my mother was a teacher, that wasn't a plan. That really wasn't the plan. And she talked me into getting my teacher certification. She said, when? you might need this. When you got out of the NFL? Mm -hmm. She said, you might need this. So I went through the alternate route and got my certification. And never knew I was going to use it. I started, you know, I was executive housekeeper in, uh, uh, for a Wyndham property. I was working in... You know, I was doing, living a dream, is like I, like I said. And, uh, you know, one day it just clicked. And I was like, I don't like doing this. You know, I, I like coaching kids. Mm -hmm. You want to be so, around kids making a difference? I want to be around kids making a difference. And, you know, something that she said that is so important, I, I, and I do this all the time, I'm reflective. I go back and say, you know what? The way I disciplined my students early in my career was wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, when, when the Clinton administration came out with zero tolerance, I was applauding. I thought it was great, but it wasn't. It led to the position that we're in today. Because remember, we had kids bringing in toy guns that were expelled from school. And I'm not talking about older kids. I'm talking about fifth graders who, you know, they have a, a squirt gun. They don't know. You know, they just have a squirt gun. So, zero tolerance. Yeah, zero sounds tolerance. Sounds great, right? Oh, yeah, it sounds great. Reality. Sounds great. Yeah, we were cheering. Yeah, get them out of here. What's the reality? The reality of it is when you expel that kid, how is the kid getting educated? How is that student getting educated? Where's the fairness in that? Where's the recompense in saying you're allowed to make a mistake? Yeah. You know, if someone has zero tolerance on me one day, who knows? Who you knows? know, in a couple of minutes we have left as I listen to all of you. It sounds as if each one of you continues to evolve, change, become better and different educators. Yeah. You're shaking your head as mm -hmm. I'm talking. Yes. You have to. You have to or you, you choose to? Some don't. You're right. So it could be Most a choice. Most do, I believe. But it's always changing. Your students are changing, the types of students that are coming. Society is changing. Yeah. You know, teacher directed was for men for forever. Now it's really student directed. You know, one of the things that I've piloted this year to try out is my students create their own goals. Mm -hmm. So if mm -hmm. a student wants to work on multiplication, that's not a standard for second, second grade. grade. Mm -hmm. But that's what they want. Yeah. Don't you think they're going to succeed? Most likely. Uh, well, so I if they want to be a veterinarian, they start to look at you know, what steps does it take? A few seconds left. What's a message that you would deliver right now, everybody watching? 
who might think about going to education, you say? The rewards of education are not seen right away. You need to give it some time, but they are incredible. Um, and they are life-changing. Uh, you are changing lives. You are really transforming future. You are, uh, are influencing the future. So anyone going into education, I applaud them. I would mm -hmm. say um, believe in yourself and believe in the future because you have the power to change the world like no one else has, really. Okay. So we cannot thank you enough on behalf of everyone in the public broadcasting family, our partners at FIOS as well, all our digital partners. We thank you for everything you do for our um, kids every day. And by the way, I think your dad would be very proud of you. Absolutely. Definitely. Particularly. Absolutely. He's looking down, Definitely. very proud of you. Absolutely. Thank you very much. The preceding program has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of Caucus New Jersey has been provided by the New Jersey Education Association, Wells Fargo, University Hospital Newark, New Jersey, New Jersey Sharing Network, Passaic County Community College, New Jersey Council of County Colleges, and by New Jersey Resources. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. Caucus New Jersey has been produced in partnership with TriStar Studios. As an educator, it's all about connections. You're not just in the classroom, you're part of the community. You meet these tiny kids every year and you help them learn and grow. But you also get to know the families. And over the years, they become a part of your life and you become a part of theirs. When you build those connections, you can accomplish some pretty amazing things. I'm Jackie Kruzik, and I'm proud to be a New Jersey educator.